New tonight, listen to these statistics. In 10 years, the Knight Foundation has invested more than $122 million to help transform the cultural arts landscape of our community. If you've lived here a while, you may have noticed the big and small changes. Joining me now to discuss not only this cultural but economic impact as well is Bahia Ramos, the Director of Arts for the Knight Foundation. And thank you very much for being of here. Of course, thank you for having me. Welcome. Let's talk about the impact that these grants have had. First of all, culturally. Tell me about that. Sure. So it is part of the Night Arts Challenge is one part of our investment over these last 10 years. The other part has been about investing in the cultural institutions that serve our audiences day in, day out, the Perez Art Museums, the Frost Museums, the big institutions that are really having a dynamic impact on what our cultural fabric looks like here in Miami. How about the not so big ones? <laughs> the not so big ones. We look at things like Miami New Drama that's taking residence in Colony Theater and producing work like our, you know, the reproduction of our town. We look at kind of like the, the micro theater of Miami or like smaller organizations um, like the Third Horizon Film Festival that are really investing in kind of build in the, building the cultural identity that's very reflective of who we are here as a, as a community. And you know what? When you hear that, you might say, oh, wow, that's all well and good. You know, mm -hmm. the, uh, the arts is wonderful. But you know what? There's a big economic impact to all this and I think we have some statistics that sure. we can put up on the screen here. Now in uh, 2007 for example the mm -hmm. annual economic impact of Miami-Dade County's arts and cultural industry on the local economy was right there 92, 922 million dollars right? right? Mm -hmm. In 2017 it's 143 billion dollars. We have right. some other numbers there. The number of full-time jobs 22,000 back in 2007, almost 41,000 in 2017, and annual attendance at cultural events, 12,700,000 back uh, 10 years ago, 16 million mm -hmm. in, 2000, in 2017. Now, this is pretty impressive stuff. Are you guys yeah. high fiving over there? We're tonight, high fiving <laughs> a bit. I mean, I think part of the challenge that's unique is that it's a matching grant. So when we give an artist a grant or an arts organization, they have to match the funds that we give them. They have to get buy in from the community in order to really see their project through. And so that is kind of a testament to the community buying in and investing in the arts. As a as a, an abiding principle for how we want to live our lives here in Miami. All right, well, how do some of the smaller groups go about getting one of these grants? So they can do so. I mean, everyone does the same thing. You have 150 words to explain your idea, and now it's not just my. It's not uh, Knight Foundation just making the decision about who gets one and who doesn't. We work with a team of local arts institution leaders and artists in the community that help keep us authentic. Right, help us tell us what's emerging, what practice we be new. This is why things like visual arts and dance and theater are now flourishing in Miami because people are paying attention to what what the audience wants, what's being reflective of the stories that we want to tell, and who's best equipped to tell those. And stories. how long is this process? Um, the process goes from about April through October, and then we announce our winners in December. Okay, and tell me about some of the groups. You, I know you mentioned a few of them earlier, but mm -hmm. tell me more. Yeah, so we have things like the Third Horizon Film Festival, which is a film festival run by. Jason uh, Jeffers, who was part of the Borscht Collective, which is a kind of an independent film crew here in Miami, and he br branched out and did a Caribbean-themed film festival and gathers films from the Caribbean diaspora in Miami to showcase at O Cinema, which also happens to be a challenge winner that is one of our f first independent-run cinema houses here in Miami. Now, would some of these artists and some of these groups, without this money, would they go elsewhere instead of staying here in yeah, South Florida? Yeah, I think what the challenge gives an incentive to do is for an artist to stay here and create their work and be supported to create that, this work. We know Miami is an entrepreneurial city and when you have a good idea, people will root for you and help help see it through. So I think we are really compelling artists to stay here and thrive and make work happen. And I understand you have some new goals you want to tell us about. Yeah, what are those? I mean we're thinking after 10 years, how do we keep this, this idea of Miami as a city that really produces great art um, on the top of people's minds. So how do we develop new ideas for art that come from the grassroots that are now kind of these small ideas that we may have tended to or supported 10 years ago or now these medium sized you know institutions that really want to have a launch pad for longevity here. And so we're looking for ways to support that going okay, forward. Maybe some groups out there. That, yeah, that there are always groups out there. We're never <laughs> short on potential here in this All city. Right. But here
Leah Rumble, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And to celebrate, the Knight Foundation is hosting two events Sunday, December 3rd, artist booths and musical performances at Sunday's Pinecrest Gardens Farmer's Market, Monday, December 4th, the very night when the 2017 winners will be announced, there is a community-wide celebration on the plaza between the Perez Art Museum and the Frost Museum of Science in downtown Miami. Museum Park right there with music, art, and dance. Thank you very much. Still